Good morning folks. It's a beautiful morning here. It's supposed to get a bit cloudy this afternoon, but nevertheless I've decided to put out the chickens onto the chicken tractors today. I want you to join me. But there have been a lot of um, questions uh, regarding this in yesterday's video. A lot of people have been asking um, about the chicken tractor. They have been sharing things and um, I feel like I need to clarify a few things. So stay tuned. It's gonna be a fun video. One of the questions that many people had was why I didn't use a mobile hen house or um, an egg mobile or whatever you might call it. Um, many of you guys have shared that with me. But the chicken tractors I use, I use to raise my chickens and especially the meat birds. Sometimes I put the pullets in there as well. Now they're already with the layers, but the, the meat birds, they go in the chicken tractors. And there are reasons for that that I'm going to share in this video. But behind me you see um, our mobile hen house or egg mobile, however you might call it. That's where the layers go. I will do a detailed video about that and when the layers go out. So you see, I am raising hundreds of chicks this year. We have about 80 layers at the moment and I want to have 300 to 350 layers this year that will go out in the egg mobile. And I've been hatching chicks ever since the end of December of last year. And I will fill up all three chicken tractors now um, with, with these chicks that are in the stable here. This is the watering system that I'm going to use um, on the chicken tractors that I've used all of last year and it has worked great. Um, this is a so-called bell waterer and there are different kinds of this. Basically this one works that when this fills up it closes um, this up so no more water goes in here and um, you can't just hang it because the chicken tractor is just 60 centimeter tall. Um, this works great because uh, when you fasten it on top of the chicken tractor it hangs off uh, it hangs above the ground about this much and then you have this tube um, that you that you connect to it and this will stand on top of the chicken tractor and it will um, be easily um, refilled from the outside this bucket is white and we only use white buckets the reason for that is that if you have a black bucket, for example, that are easier to get here for some reason, then uh, they warm up way too much in the summer. Um, the water gets way too warm. And if you use red or yellow, our experience has been that, um, you know, you get insects in there. So um, we use white and, and that also goes along with the recommendations of the inventor of this kind of chicken tractor and watering system, um, Joel Salatin, who uses it this way. So, I need three of these. They're in use right now, but I'm gonna um, switch that up in here a little bit and then we'll take them over to the chicken tractors, install it. Have to fix a few things, close some stuff up there, and um, then we'll move the chickens in there. It looks like the chicks are already waiting to come out to me. Take a look. So yesterday I came here and I um, set up the water tank. We get the water from the lake and fill it up. So we have it here on the pasture. 
Um, I also put the lid or whatever you call them, the cover on top of the chicken tractor. There were some questions regarding that. Let's go to the chicken tractors. Um, I will just real quick do an overview of over why we use them and how we use them, what they're good for. So like I've mentioned before, uh, this design is copied from the ones who kind of got this pasture poultry enterprise uh, started, Polyface Farm in Virginia. You've heard me talk a lot about them throughout my videos. They have really inspired me to take um, a no dig and, and permaculture approach and a um, healthy and, and happy animal approach to a bigger scale. And um, this is pretty much built the exact way that they built theirs. We use um, scrap, leftover aluminum roofing, metal roofing, which just adds so much weight to them. Um, and then the exact dimensions, there's a short video clip out there on YouTube where um, a former um, apprentice from Polyface Farm shares um, the exact dimensions and everything. So, why, you know, why this size? Why um, keep them in, in these confined places? There have been questions from you guys regarding um, space on the floor and everything. Well, this is a little over 10 square meters and if we would use the same floor space as in the confinement houses the industry uses, they would go over 90 birds, almost 100 birds in here. And, and then you have to realize that these guys are in a confinement house on manure packed floors, dust, dirt, no sunshine, no fresh air, no nothing. So we max these out with 70 to 75 birds and then also remember these are not the layers. This was one thing I think many of you guys uh, missed. These chicken tractors are for um, broilers or for the chicks, the, the, you, see, you see I use dual purpose breeds for my layers and so I, um, the pullets go out to the layers and the roosters, they will be raised up in here um, for meat as well. And um, we only raise meat birds or um, the chicks in here until they're about 12 to 14 weeks old and then they go out, either they get slaughtered or um, they go to the layers if we have pullets in here. So they're always much smaller than, than the big chickens. So, so don't picture, um, you know, 90 big chickens or even 70 big chickens. They are, they're smaller in that sense. These get moved daily. So um, it is not free range. That's the other point that I want to stress. Free range would be where, um, you guys know what free range is, come on. So, so the, the idea behind this is that you do not want them to free range. That's the whole point behind it. I have no intentions of calling it free range or doing a free range um, because we, I, I believe, as do all of the people who, who really use this method of um, timed controlled grazing. That's what this is all about. Um, you see, in nature, the herbivores, but also the flocks of chickens or the flocks of birds that follow the herbivores, they always move. And, and on a free range kind of setup, the animals stay on the same kind of um, land for a long time with the manure load and everything. With this, they get moved daily away from manure, daily um, on fresh grass and insects. And, and it really mimics nature in that sense. And um, you know, it's also important to, to understand that this protects them. It protects them from predators. So, you know, people come, oh, that's so tiny, that's so small. This is like a playground for them. And then they get moved. So they cover over 10 square meters every day, their entire lifetime. So they will have covered thousands of square meters, um, you know, during their lifetime. And then when you look at them, we'll see this later. Now the first day they will be they will be a little scared, but, but then later we will see this, that the chickens, um, you know, there's plenty of room in there, plenty of room. So 
I want them to be confined, controlled. They are protected in there. It's healthy for them. Now, I don't want these bigger either. I, I wouldn't mind if they were somewhat bigger, but I, the, 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 one of the main benefits of this, in my opinion, is that you have small groups. Now, we put these chicks out here when they already three to four weeks last year I did, when it was still sometimes freezing at night. And they crawl up in a corner, and if you have bigger groups, they would crawl up and they would choke and kill uh, many chicks. But if you have them in these smaller groups, um, they cuddle up and stay, keep each other warm without um, killing each other by sitting on each other. So uh, the benefit here is you have small groups, you have a controlled grazing where you move them away from the manure, which you can't have in a free range setup. And you have all the fresh air, you have all the sunshine here, but they're also protected from the weather, they're protected from the predators, the hawks. Now, when you have it a little uneven on the ground, you use these boards that are laying here behind me on the chicken tractor, and you put them on the side so that the predators, predators don't come in from underneath. Um, we haven't had any predator issues last year, and believe me, we have lots of predators here. <laughs> and so do other people who implement this but it worked great so i hope this helps to clarify a little bit and like i said the layers we have those in larger groups they're bigger uh, bigger birds they're not small and fragile anymore and they kind of not really free range either you know we we don't really do free range with any of our animals um, we do controlled grazing with the cows and also the layers they um they walk freely, they're not in cages, even though you could maybe have layers in here. But they are in this egg mobile, and then they have electric poultry netting around them. And every three days, about, they're going to be moved. So that, that's kind of our whole thinking and our whole setup. So we can control um, where the manure goes, where the grass can rest, and all of that. You see, in a free range setup, um, the land can never rest. The animals never get away from the manure and so on. So, hope you un, um, understand that a little better, why we have them. We're really happy with this sh these chicken tractors. Some of you guys have shared a lot of cool designs and everything. Uh, some of them looked really awesome. I, I, I liked them. But this has worked for us. We have more aluminum roofing left for free. We have a mill that we can mill this. Don't have to buy much stuff. So, I'm going to build a few more of these this year. Let's go take a look at the chicks. Now this is uh, the first time I've maxed out one of these chicken tractors with 75 birds. That's how many are in here right now. And you see... There is a lot of room. Obviously they're gonna grow and I'm gonna move some out as soon as I can see better if there's a rooster or a hen. Now what's so awesome about this grass here is that um, it's gonna detoxify them. Some herbs and stuff that are growing here that they eat, they are like antibiotics. Um, there's just so much health here for them. I'm just looking right now, walking around to see if the, there are no gaps where predators could come in. And then I'm gonna let them calm down, calm down. Gonna get some feed for them and fill up the water buckets. And then um, they will have a blast here. They have no idea that they will be moved tomorrow. And uh, yeah, I'll see about that. Now, Originally I wanted to divide that batch there, the little ones, put half of them in here. But I'm not. I'm going to save this one and put the chicks in here soon. So, uh, we'll see when I'll do that. Okay guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this um, second part of the chicken tractor series or whatever you might call it. Um, I will mo be moving these tomorrow morning. Hope to capture that on camera. But tomorrow there will be a different um, film that will air, not the one where I move these. You'll have to wait till Monday at least. And um, yeah, 
farm life goes on. We have a busy weekend ahead of us. Hope you enjoyed this. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.